So my name is Dr. Kim McCoy. I'm a chiropractor. And um, my specialty is a thing called NET, the neuroemotional technique. So what that means is that I still work with people on things like posture and, and um, you know, structure and alignment and stuff. But my focus is really more on how that is affecting stress and the emotional, uh, the emotional connection. So that intersection of mind and body. So, um, so today we're going to we're going to do some different exercises and I'm going to give you some some tips for some things that you can do at at work because I know one of the challenges a lot of people have is is like you're stuck inside all day and it's hard to get out to to the gym or whatever so there's actually a lot that you can do even even in the context of the office so um so the first thing I wanted to do was just a just a little exercise to give you a sense of how the how your posture and how the body um, directly can affect things like mood and and your mental health because a lot of people think that their mental health is like over here somehow separate from their body over here but emotions are really they're really physical so there's there's the biochemical aspect of emotions but even your body posture sends signals to your brain that can like block or um, enhance different kind of emotional states. So to do this first exercise, um, I'm gonna have everybody just think about, um, you're gonna like pick a memory that would represent like the happiest day of your life. So you're just gonna kind of go back in your memory banks and pick out like what might be your happiest memory. And then we're also gonna, take a memory that would represent like your worst memory, like the saddest day of your life or something like that. So I'm just gonna give you a few, a few seconds to jog your memory and just think back, just pick out a happy memory, really happy day, happy memory. And then also just pick out a really sad memory, like what's the, the saddest day. So just give a couple seconds for the, for the memories to go. And then um, and then what we're going to do is like set aside the memories for a second. And then first we're going to go into like an exaggerated posture that would that would go with like a, a stress kind of posture. So what you're going to do is is you're going to like slouch, like slump over, kind of let your shoulders go forward. And um, and you're going to make like a like a like a sad face, just a, like a frown just like really like an exaggerated frown face. And then you're gonna let your head like drop, drop down to your chest and then maybe even like cross your arms over. So you, so you have like your arms are folded and you're bent over and you have the frown face and just hold that like sad bent over posture. And now try and, you know, grab that happy memory the, the best day of your life memory and and try and feel how happy it was but but keep the frown face and the and the bent over posture and that like collapsed sad posture and, and just keep picturing the happy memory and try and try and like feel how happy it was and um and what you'll find is is you almost can't do it. It's it's like you you can't feel happy in that posture. It's like it it blocks it blocks it. It just it just doesn't work. Um, but you know if we like reset the body and then we try the opposite experience, um, you'll you'll experience kind of the opposite effect. So the opposite posture would be like put your shoulders back and like sit up really straight and your eyes are going to be like upward and um and then put like a smile on your face like a happy a happy kind of face and then while you're in this like open happy face eyes pointing up posture um try and like think of that saddest day of your whole life and try and like feel how bad that felt and how sad it was and and just like with the other experiment you almost can't do it. It's like it's like a disconnect. It's it's almost impossible to feel 
how bad that was when your body is in this like um, this open, happy, happy kind of posture. So, you know, if you think about it, then if there's such a strong relationship between your body posture and what you're able to feel emotionally, you know, think about um, what is the posture that you're in most of the working day? I mean, you know, if you're working on a computer most of the day, it's not, you're not open and looking up, you're probably like curled over and looking down. So it's, it's it's naturally putting you already in that more like depressing, sad kind of body posture. So if you're always like that, then you know, no wonder a lot of people feel kind of kind of depressed at, at work or emotionally it's kind of a down downer because you're reinforcing you're reinforcing that kind of mind body connection there. So you know, you can't, you can't help if you have to be on a computer or at a desk, but to be more cognizant of how that might be affecting you, not just on the back pain level, but also just on the emotional level, it can help you become more mindful to consciously work on opening, opening up that posture for your, for your mental health. One of the easiest exercises that you can do to help open your posture is called the the YWTL stretch. So the first one is, is you just stick your arms up in a V. It's like you're making a Y, you know, because most of the day your arms are down. So we want to open them up. And then the W, you just like bring them down. Can't really see on my little screen here, but I'm making like a W. So you make a W and your shoulders are open. And then the T, you just stick your arms straight out to the side. And that's the T. And then to do the L, you're you're bringing your arms into yourself like this, and your arms are like out to the side, like the L there. So that's a super simple exercise that just helps open up the arms and the shoulders, because um, office work tends to squish it up. And um, and there's also a kind of exercise called an isometric exercise that's really good for the neck and the upper back. So isometric means that the muscle is engaging, but it's not really moving. So, so one of the muscles that gets really out of balance in the neck is, you know, we spend too much of our time looking down, looking down at the phone, looking down at the computer. So the those bendy muscles are overworked and the extensor muscles are underworked. So a simple one you can do is just put your hand behind your head and then you just press your head straight into your hand. So your head isn't actually gonna go anywhere, but you can feel the muscles working that are going back toward your hand. And what you should feel as you're pressing into your hand is you should feel a relaxing sensation on the front of your neck. So sometimes during the day, you don't even notice how tight it is in the front until you push backwards and you feel the front muscles relax. So doing this a few times a day um, can really help to add some balance to your neck and take the pressure off of those front ones that are over overused. So um, again, since you know we spend a lot of time typing and doing phone stuff, it's good to like stretch the wrists. So for, for that one, you just like stick your stretch your arm out in front of you and you know bend back on your hand and hold for a few seconds there. And you always wanna do both both sides, even if you're mainly using one hand. Um, a lot of people do this stretch, but you also wanna do the opposite one, which is where you bend your wrist um, forward and then, and then uh, pull in that direction gently, because you wanna make sure that um, both main directions of the wrist are getting, are getting some stretch and that can really help too. So yeah, so when you're thinking about um, posture and what kind of stretches are gonna help you, think about what kind of postures you're stuck in all day and then what can you do to balance it out. So for the lower body, the area that usually needs a lot of stretching is the back of the leg. So the calves and the hamstrings, because when you're sitting down all day, those back of the leg muscles are shortening 
and then they become really tight. And then that can also end up pulling pulling on the low back. So basic calf stretch and hamstring stretches are, are always good for that. So um, so even with just our little little stretches that we did there, you probably noticed that there's some there's some tension in there. So part of the part of the tight muscles is from you know lack of stretching, but um, but a big part of tight muscles is actually dehydration. So most people are not getting enough water, and um, and water water is really um, it's boring. Um, and so it's really hard to, to do, hard to keep up on, um, but it's actually probably the best thing that you can do all around. And um, it reminds me of, uh, there's a friend of mine on, um, on LinkedIn who has, you know, he's, he's plugged in with all those like tech biohacker genius guys, you know, and they're always like measuring and trying to like fine tune, like what's the, you know, what, what's going to give them the most optimum improvement in their body. So, so his friend, um, you know, did, did like all the things, all of like the super neuro, neurotrophic supplements and, and um, special gym equipment and, you know, exercise plans and everything. And, and like at the end of all of his biohacking experiment, he found that like the one thing that gave him the biggest gain in all the metrics was water. Like if he could stay really hydrated, that was actually the the one thing that outperformed all of the fancy everything. So if you can get the water under control, it, it really will help a lot with the muscles. So a lot of people wonder, um, well, how much water are we talking about? So so the the basic guideline is um, it's really tied to your body weight. So you take your body weight in pounds um, and then divide that number in half. And that's about how many ounces a day you should be aiming for. So for most adults, that's going to be roughly two, three quarts. I'd say about three quarts is average for a lot of adults. That's what you want to aim for. And then if you're doing things that dehydrate your body, then you want to get more. So things that dehydrate your body, it's going to be, of course, some sweating. You know, if it's a really sweaty day, you lose a lot of water. So you're going to want more. But also certain beverages dehydrate you. So like coffee is a liquid, but it has a dehydrating effect. So if you're drinking coffee, you want to drink more water than normal. And um, alcohol, you know, again, it's a liquid, but it has very dehydrating effect. So you would always want a lot more water if you're if you're drinking alcohol. So you know, so um, some people ask, um, you know, can I put something in my water? Lemon, you know, cucumber. Yeah, those those things are totally fine. So if it helps you drink more water, you know, just throw in a little piece of fruit, and that's and that's totally fine. Um, some people are like. Um, I like to drink tea. Does that count? Tea is kind of in the coffee category. It tends to dehydrate you a little bit. It depends what kind of tea, but for hydration, um, really you want to focus, focus on water as much as possible. And um, one tip with the water, I've noticed that if you can get your first quart before noon, it really helps with that afternoon um, energy drop. So if you feel like you always you always need a cup of coffee or a little pick me up in the afternoon around you know one o'clock two o'clock, you will notice that if you get that morning water in about a quart before noon, you probably will not need that later in the day coffee. So I really really recommend that you uh, work on water and you'll notice that if, if you're well hydrated your muscles are going to feel a lot better too they'll be a lot softer um and then of course some people um worry about well if i drink water a lot of water i'm just peeing all day so in the very beginning it's normal to have to pee a lot more if you're not if you're making an extreme change from like no water to a bunch of water that should settle down after a few days. But if it doesn't settle down, if you're just like, um, no, no matter what, I'm just always running to the bathroom. I'm not, I'm not hanging on to any of the water. 
then it means you probably have um, like an electrolyte imbalance. So the way to balance that out is um, you can you can take little electrolyte packets or, or the simplest thing is just to get some raw unrefined sea salt and just add a, just a little bit of salt to the water or just take a few pinches of salt, um, the unrefined salt. And that helps to like rebalance the electrolytes so you don't, it doesn't just run straight straight through you like that. And that salt tip is really good for right before bed. If you're one of those people who gets up at night to pee a couple of times at night, if you take a little bit of raw sea salt right before bed um, with a little bit of water, you'll usually be able to sleep right through and not have to get up and pee. So that's that's another tip there. So um, aside from like basic stretches, um, oh, I forgot to mention on the stretching part, uh, a little exercise, not so much a stretch, but sort of, is um, is making the alphabet with your foot. So you're just working on your desk. You can do like foot alphabet under your desk there. And that is a really great exercise for um, for your feet and for your ankles because the feet, again, they get so stiff during the day. It can cause a lot of a lot of problems down the line. So doing that, just making the letters of the alphabet with your foot gives a lot of range of motion and helps to keep the circulation going. And it also helps to um, make you mindful of of what's going on there. And if you're and if you're losing mobility or or anything like that. So that's a really great exercise that you can do anytime when you're when you're sitting down. So aside from like stretching and um, drinking water, um, breathing is a really, really big one that can make a huge difference when you're when you're um, having stress or when you're stuck in the office and, and you can't can't get out of there. So um, we're going to do a couple of different. I'm going to show you a couple of different types of breathing that you can do. Um, the, and before we do that, I'm going to have you just like check in with what your stress level is like right now, your tension level, and um, and try and like figure out like where where would you put that on a scale of one to ten? So one is like is like no stress, you feel amazing, and then ten is like you're under like maximum pressure, like it's so it's so heavy, it's the worst. So so just like you know, picture like where where are you how do you feel right now in terms of the stress that you're feeling in your body and then once you have kind of a picture of where that number is on that one to ten scale then um, we're going to do the first one and the first one is a, a type of mindfulness exercise so mindfulness is about bringing your mind to the present time just being right here in the now without judgment. So you're just noticing what's happening and you're not judging anything. So um, the simplest mindfulness breathing exercise is literally to just pay attention to your breath and then inside your head, whenever you breathe, whenever you breathe in, inside your head, you're gonna say the words breathe in. And then when you breathe out, you're gonna say inside your head, breathe out. And that's all. That's all you're focusing on. You don't have to imagine a picture or anything. You're just paying attention to your normal breathing. And you're just saying breathe in whenever you breathe in and breathe out whenever you breathe out. So we're just going to do that for about 30 seconds or so. So you're just going to do normal, normal breathing and just and just pay attention inside your head. It's going to be just breathe in and breathe out and just keep doing that just your normal breathing just in your head just pay attention
and then you're going to stop and then just kind of like check in again with your internal stress level. Again, you're looking at like that one to 10 level of like how stressed do I feel right now and then see where it's at. So, you know, life is not perfect because we did a breathing exercise, but um, but probably for a lot of you, if not for everybody, the little slider moved moved down a notch or sometimes maybe even a couple of notches so and that's like not even one minute of just the world's simplest breathing and meditation kind of exercise so congratulations everyone did some meditation today um and and the trick with that that simple meditation with the mental you know just saying breathe in and breathe out is that your brain has a really hard time focusing on more than one thing at a time. So if it's focused on um if it's focused on saying the words breathe in and breathe out, it it really can't jump to worrying about whatever you're worried about or whatever the stress is. It can only focus on one thing at a time. So that's the simplest thing to give it to to focus on. So um so a more structured type of breathing exercise that's pretty popular these days is something called box breathing. And the reason it's called box breathing is it because it has four parts and it uses a four count. So the way that works is you just breathe in while you count to four. So it's breathe in, two, three, four, and then you hold your breath for a count of four. And then you breathe out for a count of four, and then you hold your breath for a count of four, and then you just repeat it. So it's like a it's like a box. So we're gonna do a few a few cycles of that. So you're just gonna like breathe in two, three, four, and you're gonna hold it for two, three, four, and then you're gonna breathe out two, three, four, and then hold it two, three, four, and then breathe in for that four count, and then hold it, and breathe out, and hold it, and then now you know how box breathing is done. So that, so that's a meditative tool that also again like slows you down and helps to focus you and help you become more present and that's a great stress relieving tool so kind of similar to the breathe in breathe out that we did before the box breathing um, helps to focus your mind because you're counting and so while you're counting it's hard for your brain to like wander off into um into stressful things so the other simple kind of breathing exercise you can do is called alternate nostril breathing, and that comes from yoga. And that's um, it's exactly what it sounds like. So, so for alternate nostril breathing, you basically like close off one side of your nose, and then you're gonna take a full breath in and out on one side, and then you're gonna switch to the other side, and same thing, full breath in and out. And you just go back and forth. So some some practices, you know, they'll use like one hand and a you know a different finger to like close off one side or the other side. But it's just like switching back and forth. So it's another meditative practice. And um and alternate nostril breathing is scientifically shown to help relax the heart. So especially if you have heart issues like um, high blood pressure, things like that. Alternate nostril breathing is a really nice way to help relax that, um, especially like right before bed or anytime you're feeling kind of amped up, it can help like settle, settle that down. We're going to kind of kind of bring together some of those different elements with a technique called FAST. FAST is related to the NET work that I do. It stands for First Aid Stress Tool. And um, and there's like a video and instructions and stuff online at firstaidstresstool.com. FAST is a technique that helps, again, like reduce the stress. So uh, so before you start with FAST, you want to think about something 
that's really stressful for you right now. So maybe it's like a deadline or maybe, you know, you have a sick family member or you're personally going through something. So just kind of like picture what is it right now that's that's really up for you. So you want to picture what is that. And then and then when you picture that, um, again, with the one to ten thing, sometimes it's helpful to like put it on that scale, like where, like how stressful is it? You know, picture what is the stressful thing and then how bad is it? And then you put it on the scale. So 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 once you have that and you know what you're going to work on, then we're going to hold some um, some meridian points from Chinese medicine. So they're located on the wrist. So what you're going to do is um, you're going to hold wrap one hand around your wrist like that as if it's like you're taking a pulse. But um but it's going to you're going to have see if I can show it here. It's three fingers in a row at the base of the wrist. So you're holding instead of one finger, like taking a pulse, you're holding three and just wrapping your hand around one wrist. And then the other hand is going to go flat on your forehead. And it doesn't matter which hand you do, because actually we're going to do both hands. So just go ahead and start with one side. And while you're in this position, you're going to be thinking about the thing that's really stressful for you. Just focus on that stressful thing. And you're just going to breathe nice and slow. And some people find it helpful to like bend over and relax and just kind of curl over and hold that position while you're breathing. But just breathe nice, slow, deep breaths while you're thinking about the stressful thing. And sometimes while you're thinking about it, it fades a little bit. And then what you're going to do is switch to the other hand. So same thing, like wrap around those um, three fingers there and then the flat hand on the forehead. And same as before, just breathe. And focus on the stressful thing that you were thinking about. Just nice, slow, deep breath. So then after you do that, then you can circle back to whatever the the stressful thing was that you were thinking of. And again, um, you know, put it on that one to 10 scale and check in with yourself and see like, how bad is it? Like how, how bad does it feel? And kind of like with the earlier breathing exercise, usually people notice that they feel a lot better. And, and sometimes, um, you know, maybe you started this exercise and you and nothing was all that stressful. Like you didn't feel that bad to start with, um, but you feel a lot better now. So sometimes you don't even notice how much tension you were carrying or how stressed you were in general until some of that tension like lift lifts up. So fast is a really great tool to do anytime you're feeling stressed. Um, it's also really great for kids. So kids respond very well to fast. I have a lot of little kid patients who, who do this right before bed, and it, it can really help to settle them down, uh, especially if they struggle with nightmares or bad dreams, things like that. Fast is really good for that. And let's see. And that's pretty much my, my self-care stuff. Um, on the, the one page handout, um, actually it's not on the one page handout, but it's in the, it's in the little 10 page thing that I, um, that I sent out is just a basic, basic sleep, sleep tip, which is called the three, two, one method. So that means, um, that means stop eating three hours before you go to sleep. Um, no work, no working two hours before you go to sleep. 
and no screen time one hour before you go to sleep. So I know it might sound crazy for some of you guys, but um, but if you can do that and implement that, you'll get a lot better sleep quality. And that, of course, is pretty important for um, your mind and your body health. So that's that's what I got. <laughs> Thanks so much for inviting me.